Move approval. All those in favor? All those carried? Have you come back and passed it? So we're like, we have white, 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 uh, there's also a report provided, and I've just asked that you add to the agenda consideration of the recommendation that's provided in the report prior to getting first reading of the bylaw. The recommendation of the report simply approves of the changes that are contained in the bylaw, and the second part of the recommendation simply advises that consultation is necessary for these particular amendments. Thank you. Shall I move the motion? I'll move the motion. I'll second. Questions, comments? Pick the councillors out of the staff. Uh, all those in favor? Yeah. Will there be any? So, will the public hearing and not take place? Is that? No, what's happening is there was an initial amendment bylaw prepared that captured some of the minor amendments. The staff did a very thorough follow up job. The second bylaw, which is before you today, contains the remaining corrections that were identified by staff. The two will be married together for one public hearing on the 11th of October. Just one follow-up question. Why is it that we're considering this today rather than our ordinary meeting schedule? Uh, mostly due to the fact that we had uh, determined October 11th as the date when we wanted to uh, accomplish the amendments. Right. And it took longer to go through the OCP to identify these further corrections than anticipated. We knew we were meeting today, so we wanted to keep on the timeline for October 11th. Thank you for being efficient, Mr. Wood. With our time and the process. All those in favor? All those in And I would ask that you consider uh, official community plan bylaw amendment bylaw number four for first reading. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second, please. Second, all those in favor, opposed, carry. And uh, bylaw for second reading. So moved. Second. All in favor, opposed, carry. Can't see the recording second. Away over there. Sorry, Chris, you couldn't see it. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, opposed, carry. Not all the other um, special governance and priorities can be in Friday, September 28, 2012. Uh, Council is meeting to consider uh, its final priority setting session. Uh, as such, under Section 12.6 of the Council Bylaw, uh, regarding matters specified in Sections 12.3.7 L of the Council Bylaw, we need a motion to go in camera. So Second, please. Secretary Shelley, all in favor, opposed, carry. Thank you very much. It is our intention for, we so we now need to have people. We can stay here or we could go to community group number one. Uh, I think staying here would be easier for community room that's not big enough for, for everyone here. Uh, I'm just not sure where they're all, where all staff. So we would ask the members of the public to leave. It is our intention, if we finish today, that we'll rise and report. No, we're opening right back up. It must be about 10 minutes. Oh, oh the budget stuff, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. My mistake. I thought we were all in now, because it is a special meeting. The door media that we rise and report on Thursday. Great, thank you. <laughs> We can bring this all back to order, and uh, we'll look for um, uh, our city manager to uh, bring us bring us on board. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Both carried. Don't need a second. It's all cool, anyways. Anyway, through your worship, um, we've been been very involved over the past several months, uh, looking at uh, a priority setting, and we're. we're
finally coming down to a point where we think we have um, brought a lot of it together. Um, as you can imagine, there's been a lot of work in the background, uh, trying to flesh out some of these, look at the capacity of the organization, determine whether we can in fact um, meet uh, the priorities of council. Uh, we, um, in your meeting of July 20th, uh, you confirmed 19 must-do initiatives and another 16 initiatives that were council priorities. Uh, you asked us to go back and to like, uh, look at our capacity to be able to do those and if there were any other initiatives that, that uh, needed to come forward. We're mindful of the council decision uh, to limit the tax increases for the next three years to 3.25. So we've uh, spent a fair amount of time uh, in the department looking at each of the initiatives and so this report is just a culmination of all of that work. Much of this report will be familiar to you, uh, but there is some new information on initiatives uh, that you haven't seen in the past. Uh, we've shown how your recommended initiatives align with the broader strategies that you adopted in the proposed corporate strategic plan, and we're hoping uh, by next Friday, if we can come to conclusion on the priorities, that we would have a draft of that plan for next Friday so that we can get on with the planning. Uh, the final appendix in the report has a one-page summary, which was asked by some of you, a uh, one-page summary of each of the key initiatives, so you understand a little more of the detail that goes behind it. Um, quite, quite a lot of progress has, has happened over the last year, and, and, and many much progress will happen uh, over the coming years. We're really pleased to be able to tell you, in fact, that 15 of the priorities or the must-dos are going to be completed in 2012. So we have made uh, some really significant progress. So because they're going to be finished in 2012, we won't include them in the 2013 to 2015 uh, strategic plan. Um, there were a couple of three of your must-dos that, that um, we don't believe that we can as is um, uh, achieve what you'd like. And those three are, one is the local area plans for the Rock Bay and the Douglas Street corridor. If you, if you looked at a lot of the priorities, many of them are falling on the same division within the planning function. And um, there's only so much capacity there. And we don't believe um, that we can do those plans uh, as is. And that one of the priorities that was also recognized was the waterfront uh, uh, visioning. Um, but we, we may have an opportunity. Uh, we have applied to the federal gas tax program for a combined Rock Bay Douglas Street funding. And if we get that, those items will actually come forward as, as priorities. Also, if the government comes forward with uh, a priority around um, escalating transit, uh, then we would have to move that forward regardless of funding because we wouldn't want the, the transit uh, to come forward without city planning along those lines. So we're not saying no to those. We've applied for funding, and when we hear about that, those, although are not being recommended at this time, may come forward as priorities if funding becomes available. Um, the third initiative for which we believe that we lack capacity is looking at the parks and school zone. And the reason for that is it's a very complex <coughs> project and would require a lengthy process and, and significant staff time. And I wanted to kind of just give you an idea of, of why it's so difficult. Uh, part of the problem is many of the parks and the schools are on sites that are comprised of various titles of land uh, with different ownership. Some of the sites are not titled properties and the city may need to expend funds to hire surveyors to survey the land and raise titles with the land title office. And one of, good example is Victoria High School site in Fernwood. It's comprised of quite a few parcels. Some are owned by the city, some are owned by the school district, but the site also includes some privately owned uh, landlocked parcels where the landowner has deceased and it's not clear if the land has transferred to a private executor. Uh, sorting out these ownership situations would require, a, I believe, a large uh, amount of staff work from supporting departments, but in particular uh, the city solicitor's office. Uh, we would also require extensive cons community cons consultation uh, for public input into each, how each park and school site could be rezoned. With, with respect to permitted uses. For example, staff would need to undertake analysis to determine if there should be multiple zones for different types of parks, like a conservation area or a recreation slash uh, urban park. We'd have to know the types of accessory structures allowed, setbacks, height, 
height limitations for structures, parking requirements, etc. It may also require rezoning might have other complexities, creating non-conforming situations where both the city or the school board uh, might have to go to the board of variance um, for approval for um, things that, that uh, even simple things like a park structure. <coughs> So in order for the Planning and Development uh, Department to undertake this project, it would require significant external resources uh, to help support either this project or other projects that we don't currently have available to us. Um, some of the other uh, recommended initiatives um, were based on some assessments uh, by staff, but also some direction by council in the past that, that we are bringing forward. Um, all of what's in those priorities aren't the only things that are ongoing with staff, the day-to-day -day and, and just keeping up with, with things that come across our desk. But, but we believe that uh, the list as presented uh, covers uh, the majority of it. Um, the ones that we've asked, uh, updated, that haven't made the list, uh, that we're looking for uh, some direction from you, is the rental housing and, and the ownership components of the comprehensive comprehensive housing strategy. We did bring that forward in a charter. We're now condensing uh, that charter and, uh, and, bringing, and hoping to bring it back to you uh, very shortly. Uh, we will investigate the delegation of authority to issue development permits and heritage alteration permits. We're hoping um, to have that work completed by the end of December 2013. Uh, implement the Dallas Bluff Study, uh, federal and provincial species at risk legislation. Uh, we'll place an obligation on the city to protect this fragile uh, native ecosystem, and we believe that needs to be uh, part of the plan. Uh, continue with the evaluation of Beacon Hill Park Transportation Management Plan that we've just begun the pilot. Um, obviously, completing our asset management framework and develop a, an implementation plan is really important. Uh, we currently have uh, a very draft uh, form of this that, that uh, we'd like to complete and bring to council for consideration. Uh, we suggest perhaps uh, limiting the naming rights to just the Victoria Conference Center um, because of uh, one of the priorities is revenue and as we all know the Conference Center is not able to break even. Uh, open government through open data. Um, we believe that uh, it's feasible to move forward and, and maybe as early as January of next year with uh, webcasting. Uh, the advantage that webcasting has is it also includes um, an agenda component of it. Uh, so you get sort of two bangs for the buck, uh, the ability to manage the agendas. And obviously um, we need to put some effort and time behind the official community plan and a local area planning implementation strategy uh, which we hope to come for council approval in 2013. And uh, examining the range of options for the crystal pool. Um, because of the condition of the pool, we would like to look at what are all the options available to council for consideration at a later date uh, and to begin some of the consultation uh, in 2013 with a final report uh, expected for 2014. And uh, last but not least is uh, to develop uh, a park management plan for the S curve uh, so that we can time it with the completion of the Johnson Street Bridge. So um, more information on those and other initiatives are in Appendix C of your report. And that's just a brief overview of uh, what we've included in your package. Um, Allison is here to help facilitate um, a review and, and conversations and dialogue around uh, what has been presented, and uh, we're certainly available for questions. Right now. Here. I crashed my bicycle. So it's nothing serious, but if it hasn't appeared, like walking, I have a whole new appreciation of how difficult it is to get around downtown Victoria. Whole new. <laughs> so, if, if I might, please, please direct. Awesome. Just, uh, just. Um, my introductory comment, you know, primarily um, my understanding of this meeting is to, uh, at the very least, affirm the decisions that you've made in the past. You know, by far the bulk of uh, uh, the contents of the report are um, items that you have considered over multiple meetings. Um, there are these three deletions, and then there's a group of um, 
um, initiatives that the staff are recommending. So uh, we could, in, in my view, we could compartment, compart sorry, compartmentalize those into uh, into four groups: the, the must-do, the so three removed, the previously identified group, and then the additional, and, and go through the block by block. Or if you feel completely comfortable with the whole group as uh, as your city manager has presented, then we just consider them as a block. So at uh, the end of the day, whether it's today or another day, at the end of the day, the goal is to approve a list of recommended key initiatives for 2013 for 2015. So we have these presented. Um, yeah, that's correct because this, of course, will form the foundation of your strategic plan, which. Uh, I understand your staff are eager to you know, get a draft to you, as well as uh, Brenda, of course, and the financial staff are moving ahead and budgeting and planning for expenditures. So um, this this is the foundation information for you. Um, so three of the things we've looked at, but they're now highlighted as exceptions: is the local area plan for the block phase, local area plan for Dunn Street corridor creative parks and schools zone. Uh, my understanding from the city manager is the first two the funding comes up, uh, maybe uh, once in the middle. Uh, the third one, I know is uh, specifically to, to a couple of us. Perhaps that one needs to be one of those that I have first. Councilor Mouse, when it comes to you, I to ask you, part of the thoughts in my head is, what is the goal behind it? And I'm wondering if there's a need for a Well, I think in particular, having joined the parks zone with the creation of the school zone, I think has made this an even more complicated issue. The issue that arose was the lack of public process around uh, development of city-owned parks. So for example, if a park has a commercial zone, it can be developed without any public consultation. And so what I'm wondering at this point, whether it wouldn't be, there'd be some utility to separating out the parks issue, I mean, a de a designating a park zone to the school issue, because that is a very, very complex one. And if it seemed that we still don't have the time to deal with the, the park zone, although I would like to think that there are some parks where it's very simple and very clear that we would be able to um, designate them as park or zone them as park, I think what we'd be looking for is some kind of an assurance in procedure that would ensure that if there was a council that was considering the development of a park that was within the zone that permitted that to happen, that there still would be an opportunity for public input. So at the least, I think that could be a first step if we don't have the time and resource to do the complete piece of work, which would actually be um, zoning parks as parks. Mr. Woodland, uh, I'm going to look to you as a procedural expert to try to reflect upon um, what Councillor Maddow has, has asked for. I mean, case, I think the, the case is, you know, if we so chose to uh, turn the bowling green, then maybe some heritage issues and put that aside for a minute, uh, to, to sell that off and, and allow a commercial development to go there. Because um, I think that is the zoning for this commercial or single family. Um, is there some sort of procedural thing, whether a resolution by council or something that, that says before, you know, before, before a piece of city land that functions as a park can be disposed of, it must go through a public process. Is there some way to confirm that? Yeah, I think it would be difficult for us to do it without going through a public process. Certainly, for the benefit of the newer council members, the, the touchstone on this issue was uh, a proposal in 2008 uh, under then Mayor Lowe to redevelop the Bridge Park as a cultural precinct in conjunction with the Bowling Green. And at that time, uh, the proposal was advanced by a majority of the council, but there was a strong public backlash to the proposal, and it became an election issue. And it was subsequently abandoned. And the, um, as I recall, the issue related to the park so it arose out of that uh, heated debate regarding the outcome uh, of the uh, planning process that led to a park being recommended for the development of a cultural facility. Um, you can certainly uh, 
cut this diamond in a number of different ways. There would be cases where we have parks that are dedicated or reserved, and in those cases there's a statutory protection to development of those parks without a public consultation process. We went through that with the Ellis Street um, park conversion to a housing facility there that's now in Rock Bay Lane. Um, there are parks that do not have any specific bylaw designation that could be developed. Um, they would not be developed without any explicit consent of the council. And I suspect that the council would uh, certainly establish a convention that any consideration would be subject to public uh, input. And then we have the complicated situation where there still are parks where ownership is shared between ourselves and the school district in some form of tenure. And we have agreements back and forth where the land that looks to be city park is actually school district land and their playing field, which looks like a school district playing field, is actually a city park. And we uh, have over time uh, arrangements so that the uses conform to the situation next to a school. So that if it's the school district property that's furthest away from the school and there's city land in between, we allow the use of the city land as the playing field and we use this as the park, the school district park land as the, as the park space. So there's some uh, unusual situations there if you can see the schools. So that's the complicated part that I think is reflected in the uh, staff's concern about advancing this whole part of it. So you could pick one of those narrower areas to look at um, and staff could report back to you on uh, the implications of, for instance, looking at park zoning for city parks that are wholly owned by the city of Victoria, which don't come with any baggage other part of the central district. And Director Day is here? Yes, you're right. You're right. Not where I belong. Uh, okay. Your Worship, I think in the question that you're asking, I think that Councillor Madoff proposed a, a first step alternative that um, I certainly think would be ex worth exploring more because my understanding of the concern had to do with procedure and ensuring that there was an opportunity for public input. And the simple question that perhaps you'd like staff to explore more is, is there a procedural policy directive that council would adopt that in considering anything in these circumstances, we will ensure this type of opportunity for public input, as simple as that. I, I think that's what Councilor Madoff might be asking as a first step. So perhaps the way to move forward then is to ask for uh, direction from you back, uh, sort of uh, providing a, a report for lack of a better term. Uh, just to say, here's, based on this information, here's what we think you can suggest. And then, and then the Council as a whole have an opportunity to understand how much of the work that issue would be. Obviously, the intention is a very short or small one. Uh, Your Worship, uh, we have interdepartmentally had this conversation before, um, so it would probably be seen something that would involve parks, recreation, culture, uh, legislative and regulatory, regulatory services, planning and development, and the law department. Because we have talked about, is there something like this that we might be able to do in the past? Okay, so perhaps we provide direction for staff to report that forward and that would address it. As said, as a preliminary step, uh, the time to allow for that one. So, to formalize it as a motion based on that comment, for a report back from staff on the implications by the park zone or a policy and procedure direction for, to ensure public participation. Um, Thank you, Senator. Two million seconds. Do you want to say that? All those in favor? All those carried? Thank you, Councilor Mata. Thank you. So if we could, Mr. Mayor, just go back to the process. I mean, that's obviously a very productive conversation. Um, shall we go through those three exceptions? Is that how council would like to proceed and have any other discussion you'd like to have on those three exceptions? And then what I'd like to suggest is we try to uh, sort of to consider the low-hanging fruit. The, uh, as I said, there are four, four groups of things that we're hoping you'll consider today. 
the Masadu Council list, which is this, uh, that are going to be completed in 2012. That's the first list. Uh, I just confirmed with the staff, and we're just assuming these are proceeding, they're a done deal, we're carrying on, uh, unless otherwise staff wants to direct. They're, we're good to go with those. And then there are these three exceptions, one of which you were just discussing. And then there are the council priorities and then uh, the additional recommended initiatives for the staff. So have I got that right? Uh, city manager right? Okay, good. So, so uh, these are good to go if you want to proceed with just the discussion about the other two exceptions and see if you can come to some consensus around that and then we would go I apologize, I did jump to number two first. I think we can yeah, that's okay. settle it now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor um, Tokyo, and then Councillor Luke. So is that, that, that's how then you'll proceed, you'll look at the other two exceptions? I think, if, if I could, um, we're just gonna complete, we're gonna quickly deal with number two, then we'll take a quick look at number one to see if any counselors okay. want some information, right. then we'll jump to three and then four. Okay. But I think the first two will be done in the next two minutes. Okay. I'm only against, please, counselor. Yeah. Uh, thank you, my question is to the director of planning, just, uh, understanding the exceptions and then there was a comment that there's always current work that's being done. And so my question is, I believe somewhere in the work plan is the Burnside Gorge neighborhood plan uh, updates. And I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of a reminder of when that is scheduled to happen. And of course the drop day and the Douglas reporter the, uh, be a very important piece of perhaps some of this. So I'm just uh, I'm trying to understand the timing. <coughs> so the first step that we're saying is doable and necessary within the resources is um, hammering out the template really for all the local area planning uh, that will follow up on the OCP, consistent with the direction out of the OCP. So that each, we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we do a neighborhood plan and there's an understanding of what that's going to entail and that's a first priority piece of work um, that, we, that we are saying is within the resources that we have. Um, and we see that extending in next year because we'll be working with the community groups and everyone in the development industry to hammer out what that is. Um, so that's the implementation strategy that we're speaking of. Embedded in your OCP approval were a set of priorities on the local area planning, and the first priority that was identified was the Dug Street Corridor Rock Bay work. And what we're saying here is that unless there were access to additional resources, we couldn't actually move forward on that work uh, next year because any resources that might be available is going to be supporting the waterfront. So in the queue and in the logic, Burnside Gorge will be after Rock Bay and Douglas Corridor. Um, to the extent the Douglas Corridor is going to necessarily involve Burnside Gorge, it's a bit blurry because we've sort of shown that in a blog because we haven't actually defined what that Douglas Corridor is yet. So um, there is a queue because there's limited resources. Uh, Burnside Gorge, to the extent it's entailed in the Douglas Corridor, this would set it back. So, so resources just, are necessary to make that advance in the next year. Okay. And, and for me, it's just an understanding, and as the council lays on, understanding what the implications of our decisions are going to be done a little bit. So. And, and the opportunity that the city manager and the mayor have pointed out is we did make the application for gas tax funding. So if that started happening, then things would shift. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gudgeon. When I, when I go through this, it's, it's just a question of clarification for me to understand. When I, when I look through everything, it's been a long week. What I don't see in any of this are the resources required from each department, or which is the departmental lead on all of these. And I think that's important for me to understand. Oh, is it in the back? Because what I see is some of it precluding some of the hard discussions that we've had in camera. That making some decisions now will sort of turn around any further discussion about some of our budget reduction strategies. 
by not making any sense. Do you get, does anybody understand what I'm trying to say? Oh, yes. you do? Okay, I'm getting nods from the yeah, yeah. And so I'm wondering how we fit those tough discussions that we need to have. Like, it's like we're going forward on, in a direction that will eliminate the discussion. And if we agree to what's being put forth, we can't make the tough decisions that we were proposing in Cameron. If I could, thank you. Uh, that's a really good discussion and question. Uh, I think we need to have that discussion within concept of item number three up there about council priorities. I just want to finish item number two, which is the exceptions, uh, which we're just on the bit. I mean, there are people comfortable with the exceptions right now that have been outlined, which are um, right now we will not include Rock Bay, Dutch Street Corridor, or school zone, park and school zone. Uh, unless there's funding coming forward, and then those two, the top two will come in. The third one is dealt with by having a resource issue going. Just want to get knocked that off, and then we'll come back to private. So if that's, that's a good one. It's going to lead us into uh, number three, but we finish number two. So if you're speaking to number two, uh, uh, Councilor Isaac, uh, uh, so one thing, um, it's just a line, it's on page three of the report. It says, because of its greater economic development potential, Development of the Inner Harbor Waterfront Revitalization Facility study the business case is recommended as the focus. I need to see evidence that there's greater economic development potential on the harbor. Because my understanding is basically, let's say we were able to approve 40 story condos on the 10 or so public legal parcels around the Comptee Harbor. I think that's still a fraction of the development potential of the Street Corridor. So I think that business case, compared to business case, or business analysis has to be looked at much further before we just assume that the harbor has greater potential for new construction, for housing, for new economic activity. I think the harbor would be beautified. It would certainly help the downtown to have more happening there and like more you know, public realm element. But even I think if it was more high-rise towers, I just don't think uh, I guess I just don't accept that premise. And I think the OCP, I think, properly envisions that, that the real area for growth and the real place where we can build and should build is north of the downtown. And so that's why I support the principle of the OCP, which is that Rock Bay and Douglas Street, which I think is actually a combined zone, it doesn't necessarily have to be used. Certainly, Rock Bay could be subject to more intensive planning if funds were available, but I personally see Rock Bay as a part of the Dutchman Street Court, which, and which can also be pointed out is a vacant section. It actually falls almost entirely within the Burnside Court, basically the easterly reaches of the Burnside Court. So, Council, I think it's perhaps if I could, uh, the suggestion is um, from Council Isaac that he prefer to replace uh, Harbor Visioning uh, and Plan uh, and, and put it down on the priority and move up the Dutchman Street Corridor one. Um, so, I think that's a Yeah, no, it is. Thank you. Um, I'm very supportive of doing the work for the Inner Harbor uh, study. I think maybe it's the, the, the rationale for it is the, is the concern. My interest in doing that is not predicated simply on economic benefit. It's on the need to have a comprehensive vision for the harbor so that we can develop it in whatever way it's going to be, whether it's a park, whether it's amphitheater, whatever it is. So I'm supportive of keeping that as a priority, but perhaps um, the notion of why is something that I, I would also not necessarily agree with, that it's not the economic driver. There's a lot of other drivers as well in terms of why we should have a comprehensive plan for the, for the inner harbor. I think I would support you in that. Um, we went through extensive community consultation for our official community plan, a uh, huge engagement, and that rose as one of the highest priorities ever since. Um, to your worship, I think some of the wording is sort of misleading too. Economic development can also be tourists and you know, making the city attractive for people to come, not necessarily uh, developing on the harbor. I think the wording is misleading. I agree. So, uh, to actually focus our discussion, those are uh, one of the things you could do is put a motion on to replace that, and then we can vote on it. Because the OCP says the primary area for study for new growth is north of downtown, Humber Green. So why has the harbor, while well, revitalization, sort of moved through the back door? 
And even if I agree that enhancements along the lines described by Council and Madoff would be great, and I don't think they're mutually exclusive, but if we're going to deploy our planning department in terms of new local planning areas and the minutia of what can provide a framework for new neighborhoods and new 10 to 20,000 population growth, uh, I just think the harbor revitalization is a distinct uh, planning function to what the OCP vision is a major study. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Mel, and then, uh, I think we actually need more information to be able to move on at some point or just in the conversation with Councilor Mel. Well, there's a long-term vision and there's a short-term vision as well. What I see with the harbor is that we already have projects underway or being contemplated that we need to be able to respond to in a holistic way. We've got the proposed uh, air terminal. We've got the redevelopment of uh, the CPR terminal and the interest on the part of the other marine carriers to come up with a vision for that area. And I don't see how we can do that in isolation. When these have been pressing issues for so many years, Rock Bay is obviously something that we want to have happen. We need to have the input of the hydro lands. They need to be ready to go as well. I see that longer term than the need that we have to be able to respond now in context, not just zoning little pieces of the harbor in response to the specific applications that we get. And so that's what I think is most important. And that's why I continue to see that um, as a, a number one priority for the planning department to make sure that, that we can help to lead and steward development around the harbor in, in a comprehensive way and not in a reactive way. So if I could, um, let us then uh, call a council uh, vote on uh, keeping the three exceptions as Rock Bay, Dunn Street Corridor, and Park Street for extending the direction for staff. Can someone make that motion, please? Mr. Carlos, all of you. Can we favor? divide it? I believe procedurally you can divide it. Yes, sir. Uh, the first one, conduct local area planning. So the exceptions are, number one, uh, local area planning for Rock Bay. All in favor of that exception? Opposed? Uh, uh, exception to Dunn Street Corridor. All in favor? Opposed? Opposed? Please record this. Uh, Councillor Isaac, opposed? Um, uh, parks and schools open. All in favor? Opposed? Councillor Isaac, thank you. With the, 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 the previous. Acknowledging the previous. Acknowledging that we have asked staff to come up with a right. regulatory solution. Right. Thank you. Great. 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 Let's jump back to must do. Council, um, all of the all of the, um, the must-dos, uh, Council's must-dos and priorities that were completed in 2012. We have a motion to move them all. Is these pink cities? Six. Six, six of six. So maybe again, we could just ask uh, the staff to, to, to just explain what these are. Maybe we can ask Council if they want explanations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just for clarity. Just for clarity. Thank you. Does Council want any explanations on any one of these? Council Alton. Uh, I'm not sure I want an explanation, but I'd like to know procedurally when it would be appropriate to ask questions or suggest perhaps alterations. That would be now. Now. Excellent. Please, uh, that was, please go ahead. Uh, I have no problems with any of these. I think they're <coughs> particularly excited to see what's numbered as number 15, opposite, uh, which looks at uh, finally the implementation of webcasting in the early of the year. So I'm quite delighted with that. But I also wanted to draw attention uh, to my colleagues to the really outstanding report that was circulated uh, earlier this week, or late last week, uh, from Mr. Wilkins office, detailing in a quite a thorough manner all of the possibilities that lay before us in the implementation of a wide variety of activities that would meet our open government and open data resolutions that we passed last year. Councillor and I, and I spent the morning at a very illuminating conference that I won't go into, but it was on this particular issue. And uh, although it, for me it didn't present anything, anything particularly new, it did reinforce uh, my belief that this particular uh, direction is one that really is a fundamental principle and really a very critical base for all of the other work that we're doing and anticipating doing in the next two, three years. And so while I remain excited at what is designed as number 15 here at our list, I think that it doesn't go far enough. 
and I would like to ask uh, for advice on when it would be appropriate to actually have a discussion about enhancing number 15 by looking at some of the pieces in the report that Mr. Williams provided. I'm not certain that today is the right time because of our time constraints, and I think the discussion needs to be fairly full because it obviously has significant budget implications which need to be accommodated, obviously, by looking at the totality of it. But I do think that it would be, uh, I would be remiss in not raising the issue at this time and asking uh, again for advice on when it would be appropriate to speak specifically about enhancing that recommendation. So, um, and I was just wondering, uh, Councillor, uh, is I know that it's also open government to open data. Yep. Uh, is also part of 2013 to it is, and if I could comment on that, on page 36 of our documents, which is uh, among the very uh, well outlined and detailed recitations of each of the steps would be attached to all of these recommendations, it does lay out uh, quite neatly uh, what particular pieces of this could be in 2013, specifically dealing with uh, both the mechanics and the operation of the electronic meeting uh, applications for this new technology, which of course includes uh, broadcasting. So that's great, and again, I'm so thrilled to see that there finally. But in 2014 and 2015, there are blanks, and I guess one of the notes I make to myself is whether or not we could add into 2014 uh, slash 2015 as a combined within that 24 month period is an assessment of the ability to implement the balance of <laughs> the oh god recommendations uh, as outlined in Mr. Woodland's memo of September 2014. I, I think that would, uh, yeah, uh, so staff, uh, if we could, I think what Councillor Alco has done, and we might the city manager, and see what they but that under the 2012, what you're saying is we can do the assessment, and we can put yeah. web in. Uh, <coughs> the rest of the stuff that forms a report, we want, a Councillor is suggesting that we uh, look to include that, the rest of the yeah. government for consideration in the 2013 through 2015. Correct. Yeah. Through your worship, I I think because it is a brand new budget item that has not been considered in kind of the work that we've done, it's probably best uh, referred to the budget discussions um, because it'll have to be considered with all those other budget items. Okay. So can we ask uh, Councillor Alder to think for a moment um, and sort of reword number twenty that. That includes the request. So, item number 20 on the long term stuff that allow us to uh, address uh, the issue that I think most of us are interested in. Um, so, it's not just web. Web is 21. Everything else comes in 2013 to 15, and, and at least we'll have that wording with that, and then that obviously is based on budget discussions. Okay, Councilor Robinson. Um, I think the wording of 15 is broad enough to allow for describing explore opportunities to enhance public access to government information but it could be something as simple as asking that uh, Mr. Woodland's report be, be scheduled as a formal GDC item and that's where we could put their time on it. I don't know if we necessarily have to change the text and put more workshop documents in the back <coughs> but I would strongly I would strongly support having that discussion soon um, that if we could Council of Art Director was on the staff for a lot of work with that. So in the next maybe two months, if they could refer that report to GPC, and then we can dig into it and see what elements council supports and what a timeline might go that. My guess just that is that the intention is not to shut that whole report down. Right. I think the intention is to say if it's in 2012, we might be able to get webcast to that. But that's just one piece of a larger piece <coughs> that we explore as a council. So if I, if I can just interject here, if you don't mind. Um, that this one page, I just want to remind you, reading this information piece, that these items are going to be completed in 2012. Um, so we're just dealing with the remainder of 2012 on this page. And then acknowledging that you might want to make changes, you know, in the future part of the budget. But as is, this is what's happening in 2012. This is what the staff are going to be putting in this year. So then we'll flesh out the rest of the priorities on number three. We just give them a Right. The only thing that I would add in and make it a, a 2012, I was looking for 7A or B, is uh, I think substantive completion uh, will happen with the centennial part. Uh, can you clarify what you're trying to do? Should this is really, 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 really
uh, in, no, in, in Central Park, we have um, some major add-on equipment going in. We're preparing it right now. Yeah, that's going in. It'll be completed here within the next few weeks. I mean, it's, it's really council just an awareness that Parks is doing that just as they're finishing off Cook Street, just as they're finishing off uh, Waterfront, or sorry, Fisheries Wharf. They're also finishing that, that off. I just want to, it's big enough that it should probably start off. Seven will be redevelopment Fisherman Ward Park Phase Two construction and redevelopment Fisherman Ward Park and Central Park. <coughs> or we can just ignore it and council knows it's going to happen anyway. So there's a short meeting on Monday. For that matter, the, the implementation of the shower comes out with happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I just said there's so many initiatives that are underway, and, and Julie can speak to all of them. I think this is capturing one. If we want a complete update of all the things that's happening, I don't think that is the, the intent of this format in terms of major, major, yeah, process, like major development. So let's just be happy. There's none here that anybody wants to kill, I guess is what it was. So <laughs> if I could just offer a reminder, these items that are here certainly aren't a comprehensive list of what's going on in the city. This is a list of the things that council identified as must-dos and then are uh, reflect the priorities that council identified that are going to be completed in 2012. We could probably spend days going on to the things that the staff are working on. And complete. So, so these are really things that we have discussed previously. Do we have a motion for all those in favor of all of these? Those carried, thank you. We are now getting into item number three, council priorities, which is, uh, is now appendix B, recommended key initiatives for 2013 right. to 2015. Right. And again, these are items that we've discussed in the last couple of meetings that you've ranked, you've identified uh, with, with the three exceptions. Uh, there's, if we're going to separate out these additional items, there's nothing new in here. These are all items that you have processed in your previous meeting. So we're looking for items, so we're looking through this items of clarification, items of I want more information on, or I would like to reconsider this as a priority. Uh, the sort of approach we may take to this session. Councillor Helm. I just have a question because I don't see all of Council's priorities reflected in Appendix B. Or some of them are only uh, in Appendix C, so I just want I want some clarity on how we proceed. Like, explore opportunities for increasing revenue isn't part of Appendix B; it's part of Appendix C. So I just don't want council priorities to get missed, which they won't. And the first thing that I meant to say when I started speaking was to actually thank staff for this very amazing Appendix C, which is really really helpful in terms of mm -hmm. costing out and linking our priorities to the OCP. But in terms of uh, how we proceed with our discussion, I just... Uh, so the question is, what's the difference between Appendix B and Appendix C? Okay. Um, for my choice today. The reason that um, Red Revenue, for example, isn't in there is because that was seen as more of an overall strategy for which a number of specific um, actions may be assigned. So um, we had a strategic plan will be actually showing what sorts of items those might be. But the way the council put it for as a priority was an initiative per se, so that's the difference on that one. But the two lists um, are the same, <coughs> that the one-page summaries correspond to um, everything in Appendix B, so they're, they're, um, they're Great, that's helpful. So really then what we're doing is considering three and four at the same time. Is that true? What are the, what are the well, additional well, appendix, appendix B and Appendix C contain both the council priorities the must-dos and the new initiatives. The new initiatives are at the end, and let me get the Ellison can make that clear. So yeah. um, they're, they're all included in the appendix, and you have a complete array of all of the items that are going to be advanced. Just the other, what I have called additional <coughs> initiatives, those are the items that your staff have said or did not make the cut. When you Where are they? In are they are on, uh, well, in, in the report itself, they're at the start at the bottom of page one. In addition to Council's priorities and must do the recommended key initiatives for 2013 and 2015 are update the rental housing. Um, yeah, yeah, we went through these previous. Actually, actually, page four and five. Oh, the sorry. Report. There's, yeah, page four and five, they're identified here. And the rationale is there, as the city manager explained, for why they're recommended to be included. 
So the order is the same. Appendix B and Appendix C, everything is in the same order. So and there's a table of contents for Appendix C. So you want to look up the details of any one of them. Um, they're all in the same order, so that makes it easier to, to follow. Hopefully. So uh, what I'm trying to understand then, the first one, update rental housing strategy is listed as a new initiative, as an additional initiative, but it's in Table B, it's in Appendix B and Appendix C. So I just want to know if we're considering how we're going to consider three and four separately if they're all meshed together. Um, this, this is the report they have, right? This, yes. Yes. Sorry. So on page the front of page yeah. one of your report, right at the bottom, uh, in very brief heading form, those are the initiatives that your staff have recommended should go forward in addition to the priorities that you set. So if you want the quick view, that's where they are. But also, as Stan has indicated, uh, in detail on page four of the report. Oh, it's actually page, I think your numbering is a bit different. Oh, right. on, page, on page nine of your report, starting at initiative number 14, oh, those okay. are so those yeah, are being number four. I, I'm sorry, because uh, I'm working from a draft, aren't I? I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So, so, 14, so number 14 to the end, to the end, those would be the additional ones that we recommended. Thank you. That's very I'm, I'm okay. sorry. And they correspond to the ones in the table um, inside the So now we're considering report. 1 through 13. Mm -hmm. Which yes. again, just to emphasize, these are all items that you have considered previously and have prioritized and made the cut. Thank you for that. So council, uh, on one through 13, uh, for brevity, is good. Does anyone want to pull any one of those ones through 13? Or ask questions from staff on the specifics around that, or do more detail? Uh, if, uh, so thank you, Councillor um, Joe and Councillor Hudson. Uh, once again, I echo Councillor Hudson. Thank you for the part of the report. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to add one thing on page 27 of 39 with the review partner services. It's a small detail, but under the benefits, I think I would love to have, let's say, include customer service under the benefits. I know this is mentioned on a couple other ones, and I, I just think instead of focusing just on revenue, yeah. um, that's something that I really appreciate. Thank you. Um, Councilor, I'd like to pull nine and Thank you. And just a really brief comment on 12, but it hopefully needs to be pulled because I support it. But I know that that that, that could be a focus on number nine. Oh, that'll hold 12. And then you can tell me about it. Yeah, hold 12. Yep. So I'll move the rest. All of the rest are, no, sorry, does anybody else want to pull any others for discussion? Okay, well, before we go there, uh, give a chance for everybody to do a quick scan. Councilor Eyes, if you would address nine at this time. Sure. Um, I don't recall the particular language that we had on our priority setting sheets. I, I think Council's will, I think this got very What would you like ready. to change it to? Um, yes. The whole priority was that we would enhance it, our public transportation generally. That we would have a strategy for all those malls, everything included in it. But it was more than just not taking account. We want to move forward on public multimodal transport in this city, get people out of their cars. I, I think if I could, you're right, when we, and I, I recall, it was on that, wall. Was on that and wall. it got like 46 points it's or something. It's very, very, very general. Uh, and I think, in my recollection of the discussions with the staff, was that this would be the first step in, in, in trying to move forward uh, Council's you know, knowledge and decision making around that, what was identified as a very general topic. I guess just because that language is so much weaker than to implement different action plans and implement decisions, and here we're going to get an update, and that's the end of what that's the end of the measurement, the threshold that has to be met. That measurement, that threshold is far too low. So part of the language I think, and I, I, I understand what Council Eyes is saying, I mean, update means to come forward and tell us what we're doing. Uh, Council wants actually to update, yeah. review, yeah. adapt. Implement. Propose. Yeah. yeah. So that language needs to reflect that. That it's more of an active versus a passive. Mm -hmm. So if somebody could look to craft that a little bit more. I have the original language here. 
Uh, it says examine public transportation options. So I think in fair. So I want to start with examine public transportation. That, that's a good one. Well, it's wider. I, and it starts with informing us. But then we're going to yeah, may, maybe maybe we can combine both of those together because I, I again I, I think the intention was that well there's a lot going on and maybe what we need to do is we need to spend some energy on bringing council up to speed on what is going on and then you can proceed from there. I think the word examine is better. With that, all of these council will be up to date. That's a given. I'm sorry, we're here for we're good. I think what I hear from council is we're reflecting is, is uh, we don't want to be clams. We don't want to just sit there and have water come in and water come out. We actually want to do something on public transportation. Mm -hmm. We recognize it does start with information. We recognize it then move to Hamilton. <coughs> and, 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 you know, we make Rudy happy going, well, we're rocking it. But we may say we're not happy with one kilometer of bike lanes per year. That's not enough. Um, so we want to give an indication that we recognize staff time and resources may be added. Yeah. To move this way. Right. So that's what we need to put. Councilor Gadget, is it twice? No, we'll finish off on this first. Okay, we'll finish this one. Thank you. On this topic, um, that will require updating or at least speculating about updating page 25 of 39, which shows zero capital and zero operating dollars going to get this over the next few years. Yeah. So I think that's not a zero that we want to see, particularly in the capital budget. <coughs> Probably until we examine the report. Yeah, exactly. But just TBD rather than zero. Yeah. Not to get right. Okay, so we can just change the wording in number nine to examine public transportation plans and options. Then we will be happy with that. Councillor or Councillor? Your spirit is it? Your Worship, just the clarification that we saw at the last meeting, you were speaking about a particular corridor or are you just speaking about generalities? Like I thought with the last meeting that, was, that that was corridor. Is this just public transportation plans in general? Because that's a, a significantly larger body of work than which what I initially thought, and I think I believe it was even Councillor Young that brought it to our district, was along with that was a corridor. Is, and those were those interim measures that were explored with transit of what could be done along that corridor until such time that the larger plans could get advanced by them and to allow some discussions to occur with transit about those opportunities. So just, just to, Threatens to become a wordsmithing exercise. That said, if you just stick with the exam and it's a passive study, the call to action of the strategic alignment is that we partner with regional stakeholders. So I don't think examining the issue is actually powerful, powerful enough. I, I think you need to rethink that because I think it does have some budgetary implications. I think Peter's quite right that you want to be specific in the direction as to what you're what you're asking for. But I, I think examine is, is easy. Um, there may be a lot of stuff in it, but this is really about partnering with strategic stakeholders, one of the region stakeholders. And again for me, Peter, I understand your one really concern. Uh, but for me it's expected for council and it's expected for council young and questions are right around this table. Um, there may be some specific initiatives within that. We certainly need a starting base to understand what is the bicycle master plan, what is the green waste plan, that sort of stuff. Um, and, and we may have, be happy with what we're doing, and, and, and that, but we also may want to realign resources or dedicate new resources over the next two or three years uh, to expanding them. So I understand that. The, so the first step, is, is, as uh, Gail has said, is find out what we're doing. Secondly, analyze what's coming, and then thirdly, make changes if necessary. But we're just looking for the words that capture that, recognizing we're doing a three-year plan. Um, you can update us by Christmas, right? So um, if analyze doesn't capture that for you, I'm, I'm trying to put in words the intention of council. Councilor Ross. Well, one option is improve public transportation options, or examine and improve public transportation works options. Works for me. That, yeah, that one actually captures where I want to go. I want to see improvements in public transportation, pedestrian cycling. And we recognize we don't know the budget the capital impacts and because we haven't even chosen what they are, but we want to know that. So examine and improve public transportation options. Plans yeah. public but as a vision of what we want to set forth for our community, mm -hmm. that is a very, very strong support we'll do. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, number nine, all paper is number nine. As for me, Gary, thank you. You got the amendment on that one. I'm not going to do it. We've got that Christine came in and it's a long deal play play right after that. <laughs>
I'm just gonna put it. Done. Number eleven. Similar. Again, setting our goal state. Basically, you can do, I think to, to better reflect I think what council's will is basically to to uh, realize the middle park uh, cycling and walking amenity improvements on the CRD's dime, when they're carrying up on roads, or back to back, a better word, carrying up their whole corridor along Dallas Road. So I think it's more than just planning for construction impacts. I think it's enhanced pedestrian, cycling, and park amenities on Dallas Road waterfront in conjunction with sewage treatment infrastructure. Now, I'm going to jump in there only because yes. if you use the term enhance and amenities, yes. the CRD has voted to say, you, we will not do that. So, if you are mitigating the impacts mm. of sewage treatment, <laughs> <laughs> then it makes it their issue. No. Okay, so <laughs> why I say this is because that there's an understanding at least. For example, Caledonia Avenue is being redone right now. It's a street I'm quite familiar with. I think in some ways it looks beautiful, it's going to be good for traffic coming. I'm concerned it's a little bit of a missed opportunity to Greenway. We're talking about now but making grants to a it's a very narrow street. I think Caledonia would have been ideal for the old streetcar right away. So I just don't want to see a missed opportunity there. So I think something touching on the multimodal benefits of, of Dallas Road, that we don't get caught with our pants down and miss the chance to put a dedicated sort of world-class cycling track. Like something like the uh, Galloping Tubes that along with Dallas Road. So I'm actually going to support where you're going to go, um, but I think we actually have to do more. Like, for example, one of the things that John Sturdy will be bringing forward to our discussion in, in more detail, um, an awareness of, of the condition of the Dallas Road Balance Board, uh, which is, is well, and the Councilor Madden and I uh, were a bit more familiar with this, and Councilor Young is familiar with it. But it's, it's an issue. Uh, I do not believe we can actually say to the CRD, it's a million bucks, it's all yours to fix, you just have to be running a pipeline. But, while they're there doing this, there may be some cost-effective savings that we can put on. Um, so I, I think we need to go, A, let us see what is mitigation of what they're doing. And, and certainly if they put out to dig up the road and put asphalt back, I'd love the fact that they had a green line on it mm. to, to put a bike lane in mm -hmm. um, or that sort of stuff. So but I, what we really, what I want to see as staff is, I mean, this is a major project. We want to get as much mitigation from CRD as possible, but we also need to have an eye to there are some capital infrastructure issues that we need to fix along there, and now's the time to highlight them. But we need to know what they are. So that is specifically what, like how it's going to come Chris next. Okay. No, sir. So Chris, you can solve it by just putting develop develop mitigation plan for construction impact and sewage. Develop mitigation plan. John and, and Peter, does that but does that convey to you? I mean, we need to. I need to know that you're also working on that Dallas Road balustrade. I need to know that you're also working on all the other stuff there. Yeah. Like I don't know if we need to. I mean, if we're digging it all up for a sewer line, there has to be a water line that needs replacement. Shouldn't we be working on that too? Because I mean, nothing that people hate more than you dig up a road, fix it all up, and then a year later you come back and dig it all up again. Because you know what I mean. So I want to make sure that you guys are thinking about that. So I want the language to reflect that. Mitigation, but opportunities for alignment with our own infrastructure needs. Mm -hmm. Peter, John, John, you ready to either one? Yeah, actually that was uh, the, the term I was going to suggest that you worship with alignment um, <coughs> with uh, uh, potential multimodal upgrades along the Dallas corridor so to, to align uh, our potential multimodal upgrades along the Dallas corridor with the, the work that, that CRD is doing. Uh, that's more in relation to the server works, but we are also looking at the, uh, the subsurface improvements as well and making sure that we time those improvements that we know are coming with that work. So we had uh, mitigation strategy and alignment of capital alignment infrastructure needs. Upgrades. Alignment of multiple upgrades. Yeah, even an alignment of capital improvements uh, might be good. Okay. That so covers capital group. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't. I can't really see a water pipe as multimodal. No. <laughs> yeah. No, you have to have the other one too. Okay. So, so we can do that. Uh, if we're okay with that, that change. Yeah. I can yeah. Just to capture it's something like aligned sewage, new sewage treatment infrastructure with capital upgrades, and 
can be maybe multi-modal options. So what I want to make sure though is that someone like Dr. Marzo or someone in his department that we do have someone thinking of what is the pain wave potential. Because that is that is parks planning. Like if maybe that has to be a priority in 2013 for parks planning. But what do we do with that 100 foot right of way from the houses to the, the top of the blocks? Okay, so let me get the language here. I think it's develop mitigation strategy with an eye to maximizing our infrastructure. And transportation. Uh, and opportunities for opportunities. Space for drinking. Infrastructure. Yeah. Transportation. infrastructure uh, transportation. What do you got? Capital improvements. Yeah, what do you got? Janet, <laughs> <laughs> you're making notes on wondering what you have changed this to. Actually. I've got a couple of different options here, but well, the thoughts are in around mitigation strategy to maximize um, alignment opportunities with infrastructure. Improvements or capital improvements, something along that line. Okay, we'll clean it up and be happy yeah. with it. Thank you. That is item 11. We're sorry, going to keep entry. Is this a question from 1 to 12 or 1 to 14? This is just question 11. All those in favor, number 11. Opposed, carry. Thank you. Next item is item 12. I just want to apply, I can support this, but I just want to apply that there could be uh, labor and staffing implications. So there is an inconsistency in between matters being considered to happen. I want to, I'm okay with that. I've been talking to council members this week from other municipalities who do, do all their budgeting and all their priority setting in open session. And then their, their uh, workforce happens to be apprised of council's thinking in terms of increases or reductions in various areas. So we are being public here with the fact that we are looking at no or not. Well, it's before you, you use your text. I've never been briefed in closed session, so I'm not speaking under the classroom. But go ahead, I'll tell you when you I'll tell you when you brief closed session. Okay, but I guess it's but user pay infrastructure suggests that that would be a user pay where previously there was an alternate payment. So I just throw that away. Good. Review parking services, goals in identify and implement change in the service. That's right. So it's pretty clear, I'm just saying that there are other elements of changes to the service that could be also discussed in open session. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, are we okay with 12? Yeah, now I want to ask, but I cannot vote on that, or I'll be voting in the negative unless I can have five minutes in camera. I have, I have a serious no, question. That's fine. So on item 12. On, on item 12, vote? Oh, on item 12? Well, no, on all, okay. But okay, let item 12 go. It's to do with what Ben's having to say, though, so not specifically on 12. But let vote on item 12. Okay. All to in favor item 12. Vote. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Berger, just I thought we were specifying in terms of process. Are we actually voting on each one? We, uh, we were voting on those, and we were hoping to omnibus all the rest. Right. Okay, good. Just for the And then to highlight those, yeah. it was given a chance for councillors to review items 1 through 13, other than not 11 and 12. Okay. If people are happy with items 1 through 13, um, this is where I need to go on the camera before I can vote on 1 through 13. Okay, thank you. Uh, we need to go in camera. I'm sorry, Paul, uh, what, sorry, the part of process. Can we speak for what reason? For what section of uh, the council bylaw? Labor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Personnel. Mm -hmm. And we'll just go into the other room? Sure, let's go in the other room. Save your set up and stuff. Can I just go uh, to the city manager? Just the city manager? Just the city manager. Okay, council, the city manager, Mr. Woodland. We need a motion to go in camera uh, based so on personnel. All in favor? Opposed? Where is opposed? Frank, hang out here. Just in case. Just Thank you. Councilor Young. Mm -hmm. 17. 
Councillor Alto. 20. 20. Councillor Isaac. <laughs> We're up to that last lot. How high are we going? We are going to 23. What about just going through the one by one? Thank you. I would actually have to, if I can get six or seven of them done, that would be helpful. So uh, if anyone specifically has one that they want to bring up, otherwise I'd like to at least get a bunch done. 15. 15 has been brought up, yes. So we are pulling 14, 15, 16, 17, and 20. And actually, and 22. And actually, 23, I apologize. Okay, you've now accomplished the yeah. fact that how are you? I'm going to be at 3. Yeah. <laughs> 18, 19, and 21 are moved. 18, 19, and 21 are moved. All of them. Actually, 19, uh, sorry, I'm just. Brought, brought one, but 19, that's the discussion. 18 and 21. It's on all of those. <laughs> 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 it was a joke, your version. No, no, you've already moved them. All favor, opposed, carry, thank you. Let's go through with item 14, please. So I, oh, sorry. Uh, who pulled I that? Invited. Good. Um, I, I think that it's great to have all this housing strategy and I recognize this in our OCP, the housing chapter in the OCP was drafted um, before the work of the coalition has come to fruition, we saw a great report last week. I, think, I, don't, I don't think we need to do this, I don't think we need to plan and study. We saw in the Times Colonist last, a couple days ago, that 30 or 40 people died on our streets this summer. I don't think we need to spend any more money studying housing or doing updates of plans. I think the coalition's doing a great job. It is their mandate. And I think that we just drop this and just tax it from the list of priorities. And to be really clear, it's not because I don't think housing is important. I think it's because there is a great coalition and there are great nonprofit societies building housing in our city, and that's what we should support. So I strongly Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, um, I think, appreciate those comments, but I, I, I disagree. I guess it takes. Um, we have to look at the mandate and what the homelessness coalition does, and I'm on the leadership council along with several others. It looks specifically at the hardest to house and those people in housing emergency at, uh, at, who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. And there's a whole bigger picture of uh, housing affordability. And I think what this seeks to look at and what our um, the report we received looked at is how do we look at land use policies that can uh, encourage workforce housing affordable housing all across the spectrum. What incentives could we put in towards only our planning or our use practices? I think if you were to ask anyone at the coalition, they'll they'll throw up their hands and say, that is not in our that's not in the end of what we do. So I think if we only if we were to delegate our housing function to the homelessness coalition, we would be leaving the majority of the population out to dry. And I think we'd see a lot of very high end condos and nothing in between. You'd end up with 30 shelters and supported housing facilities high-end condos that the only most helpful affluent can bear. And I think the city has an important role to fill. How do we keep housing affordable for everyone else who doesn't fit into those two very narrow demographics? So I just want to Sean Gordon-Joe, Councilor Alton. Someone who's also a Ministry Councilor and has been at that table since the beginning of the Mayor's Task Force. I understand uh, your concerns, but I do think that we, we started off looking at just the hardest to house because one of the mandate was to, as the analogy was with those, you know, things come, people, lives are coming down the river, you're pulling them up to save them, but at some point you need to go down the other end of the river to see why they're falling in the first place. And so when we first started off, we were focused on um, emergency and you know, the people we need to serve. I think we are now looking at things like youth, we're looking at people that are uh, coming out of care, we're looking at, uh, looking at um, um, so, the, so we're looking at more preventative things, and so I think we are addressing some of the housing <coughs> groups. So I do think it's still something we need to discuss, but whether I think it's a higher priority than the other things on this list. I think that the coalition can be doing some of the work. The Sonus is at the table. There's other things on, on this list that I think should proceed before this one. Uh, I'll open it for you. <coughs> 
Uh, I would echo uh, Charlene's very last comment about setting the priority, and maybe it's a little bit lower, but I said that when you look towards the details of this of 29, you see under objectives that the two really important objectives are expanding the diversity of housing choices uh, available to support the changing population and partnering with a variety of folks. And it seems to me that if we are, as a city, really looking at economic development and future planning with this notion that we are going to try to attract tens of thousands of new residents and workers to our city in the next couple of decades, we have to expend a little bit of money in trying to investigate uh, what diversity of housing options we need to be providing in the time period. So I agree with the notion that we don't need a lot of studies. But I do think it's important for us to continually observe and pay a little bit of attention to where we need to be shaping our housing stock, anticipating trying to grow that population here as future residents. So I'm OK with spending the amount of money that's proposed, but I do agree that we may want to perhaps uh, re-exempt priority in this. OK, uh, I'm next, and then I see Lisa. For me, I think this is really important. I think that it is ill-named. Uh, for me, it is about increasing uh, access to affordable housing, recognizing this throughout the structure. When I take a look at what are the primary deliverables, it is A, understanding what we have, B, setting where we want to go, and uh, A, B, and C. Although, indeed, actually, how are we want to get there? Are there regulatory changes that only the city of Victoria can do that will help spur rental development? that will help bring in the affordable housing ownership to do all of those issues. So again, it's not the one of analyzing more reports. Um, this is actually uh, a stage and a step to say, how can we influence affordable housing within our city? We've legalized secondary suites. we put in a secondary suite grant program. We're looking at incentives for rentals. We need things that are being led in other cities like Vancouver and other places having this crisis that we can learn from and move in. So, so again, I think it's still named, which is you know, update rental housing ownership components. What it really means is get an understanding, disinvestigate, and set our goals and stuff like that. Affordable housing for me is a number one priority, and I think it's a priority for citizens. And, and uh, I wouldn't want to, uh, frankly, say it's a little priority in the city of Detroit. Councillor Coleman, and then Councillor. I think you're quite right in the articulation of it. I think there's a number of other things that may come out of it, which is direction to council. So it may be lobbying direction in support of what the real estate board of Greater Victoria and FCM have been doing in terms of trying to get capital gains to go in tax changes. Because that's a profound impact downstream in, in either protecting or allowing mental stock to roll over and be revivified. So I, I think, yeah, the naming of it as it's here is probably awkward. Is the direction and the intent absolutely appropriate? Yes. So what did we do in suite? Was it analyze and yes. <laughs> or what soft what shoe chase? Analyzing experience. Uh Coleman's done, uh your voice and schedule. No, I'm doing another study is what would be nice to add into it. We don't need another study on this. If we can make more action, more, like find policies that will encourage or develop policies that will encourage the range of housing needs necessary for our city. I just don't think in my research that everyone's doing studies. There's a ton of studies out there on this comprehensive housing strategies. So let's do <coughs> it at the wheel. So if we can develop and implement, develop and implement policies that will ensure blah 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 blah, then I'd be satisfied to support it. Okay, so rather than update the big development implement rental housing and the housing structure. Thank you. Uh, helps and then I think I can support develop and implement land use policies that will lead to better rental housing stock in our city. I can support that. What I don't think we need is to update a comprehensive housing strategy. And if we want to do that, we have three very fine educational institutions in our region. And I'm sure that someone's already done a master's thesis on this, or if they haven't, Maybe it would be a good topic to hand off the Office of Community-Based Research. I just I think we've got parks, we've got potholes, we've got we've got all these sorts of things that citizens want. I don't think it's our job to study things. It's our job to do things. And I realize we need to study sometimes before we do. But there are lots of partners in this region who we can get studies from. 
and it respectfully have to argue that when you ask staff to go out and contact people and gather that information, that is a report, that is a study. Like, call it whatever you want, but that's what they do. Thank you, Well, I was just going to say, I thought we had a suggestion that if you remove the report update and put develop and implement rental housing, et cetera, which I think kind of accomplishes whatever So let's do that. Change it to develop and implement, and then we'll move the motion. <coughs> and then rental housing and ownership components of the comprehensive housing strategy. Thank you. Catch on that. Yeah, recognize we have a report. Right. Well, the next issue could be is something that requests is increase, increase affordable housing supply, but I can live with that money. Yeah, I, I would actually like to have affordable housing in there. That's my goal. So, so develop. So, what was the development? Develop and implement rental housing and ownership components of the comprehensive housing strategy. For the purpose of creating affordable housing. Yeah. Or for addressing affordable housing. Yes, I just argue that isn't affordable housing in a comprehensive housing yeah, strategy? Yeah. We don't have to. Exactly. I mean, the comprehensive housing strategy addresses affordable housing. I just wanted the headlines where everybody said, you're actually addressing affordable housing. You and I know it's in, but the guy in the street says, but you're not doing anything on affordable housing. That's enough. Well, it can be developed and implement affordable rental housing and ownership. Sure. It's right in front, makes more attractive. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask a question here. So, we changed the title and then we're going to call the question on whether we want to. So, please go ahead. What's the question? I, well, just my comment is that I just think you might. I, I mean, there's no question that you have a direction and 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 you're expressing that, and that's great. But you just might want to ask your staff that completely changes what's in this. And I, I don't know the answer to this, but that would be a concern of mine. Yeah, I was kind of looking for staff size, but they seem to come from the direction of center. Mr. Brooks. Well, uh, I think it's a great title. Uh, there is no, this is not about studying. Uh, this is very much a, an, an operational piece. I, I think the title is uh, misleading. It was the one, it's all we have, but uh, this is a better one. So we change the title to that. I think uh, Janice, can you capture the language on that? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Betty and Christine does too, but okay. Uh, with that, I have number 14. Everybody in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Carried unanimously. Item 15. Delegation of authority. Uh, I don't even know if I'll motivate because we have discussed this several times. We've done, so we'll just call the question. Um, yeah, I just, I just my one sentence pitch is that we were elected to uh, to fill a certain role. I don't find that these permits are onerous, um, and so I think I'm happy to uh, have elected officials make those decisions, which have a big impact on the form of care of our community. Thank you, Councilor Adam. Just restating my my previous position, I think these areas development permits, and heritage alteration permits, are applications that are perhaps of the most sensitive nature. And by delegating the authority to staff, not only do we preclude the council debate, but we also preclude the opportunity for the public to have any kind of uh, input at all. And I think that's very much a step backwards. On item 15, all those in favor? Opposed? Opposed are Gudgeon, Madoff, uh, Isaac, and Charlie Thornton Joe. Thank you. Motion carries. Item 16, implement Dallas Bluff study. Someone pulled up. Uh, yes, uh, it was a disconnect between the description. I like, I love the heading, and I love the description of the alignment. I think they're two completely different projects, and I'd like to see both pursued. Um, I think what's described in the text is a parks master plan, or even a more robust parks and ecosystem master plan, which I think is a great observation. Uh, your your um, strategic alignment is much broader than specifically focused on I love both, well. so I, I almost suggest that in 16A, Parks and Ecosystem Master Plan for staff to describe and we believe implement Dallas Bluff study as being self-explanatory. Uh, parks, where are you, Julie? I'm not entirely oh, sure so what your question is. Okay. okay, so Julie, the question is this. You said to implement Dallas Bluff study, which is extremely important, we understand why. And your specific alignment is like Develop the sustainable management of all cities, natural parks, resources, including parks, and urban forests, and ecosystems, and species of risk. Uh, between you and I, that's really big. Okay. Well, but this is what this project aligns with is part of that overarching strategy. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
with the disconnected, the other descriptions just elaborate on the head. Yeah. Or this. this one shows what it's strategically aligned with. Thank you. All those in favor of a Dallas Road Opposed, any opposed, none opposed. Yeah, I just didn't know if there's a slow hand counter out there or a close one. She was off by none opposed. Thank you. <coughs> just a question, a reminder so, uh, so, was the Parks Master Plan the low priority on the ranking? And Janet, Janet, that was half the parking. I think that was the lower implementation. It wasn't on the priority. It wasn't on the priority. Didn't make it to the top. It wasn't in the top 16. Okay, thank you. Um, 17. <coughs> it just seems to me that this uh, may be uh, too early. Uh, I think I we're underestimating the length of time it takes for the big portion of the public to visit uh, people. I got a call on this yesterday. Uh, I, 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 think we, I think we will need to let this. Uh, Hopefully, a little longer than we had expected. And uh, I think we'll push back as a uh, Just a general comment on presentation. I, I, I found the strategic alignment section of this document, the two columns, uh, less useful. They remind us how we're being consistent in terms of presentation of the public, I think they're less valuable than me. And the colored column where we try to find out a, a, a single sort of title, almost every one of those allocations could be debated, because most of them, of course, fit under several classifications. And it, 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 it adds something that's niche controversial, it's not really useful, I don't think, in presenting. Thank you. Um, so, Councillor uh, Young, so it starts in 2012 and goes to 2014. Do you think that we're so? What specific data are you work? Are you just basically saying well, look, it, we're just going to leave the changes and do nothing for a while and come back in another three years? Okay. So, police, I mean, that's sort of the end of 2013. So if I could, just for me for understanding, because my understanding is this is stuff we're going to do from 2013 to 2015. So although there's some dates scheduled in here, they might slide. But overall, I still think, the, um, God, I just changed it. I still think actually doing something with the Beacon Hill Park and evaluating it needs to be done within the next two years. Or are you suggesting oh, we're just going to leave it the way it is now and just no, no, start date? Okay, so I, I, but it's, it's about choosing it as a priority to actually say, staff, you're going to have to work on this. Oh, no, I think, I think it's just Okay, so I think so everybody's happy with this as a priority? Oh, then let me call the question on number 17. So this relates to 17. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I think what's come up is there was a disconnect between council's decision. I think the, the substance of it is we wanted to give it at least a year. And then for some reason, when we implemented it, Someone panicked somewhere in our organization, fair enough, it's a large organization, and we promised that the pilot, we promised a very short pilot, so it actually didn't put by councils in hand. Someone said three months, and we didn't ever decide that. You, I remember you yourself said, we have to give this a decent amount of time, and that's what counts for them, that's what I agree with 100%. So somehow I think that's an issue for our communication staff, unfortunately, to deal with, along with the mayor, how do we communicate that we're extending? pilot period. I think a year is maybe reasonable, so mid-2013 could be our target for ending it and allowing some time for parks to report back on when we close that, that consultation pilot. Okay, let's carve that off as a sure, separate discussion issue. specifically at GPC, but, but as, as, a a priority, yeah. as a priority, all those in favor, opposed, carry. Team, did you get a move on that one? Kathy, yeah, did you move that? Thank you. Uh, item 18. No, we moved to 18 and 19. 18. No, we didn't. 18. 18. 18 was moved and 21 was moved. Yep. Uh, 19. So my understanding is we were going to take the top 20. And I thought this, I'm not sure where, how, where this one made the cut. It was 17. It was? It was 17. Okay, and my understanding is that council voted uh, to reject the more robust version. And so I'm not sure. 
why we're conserving the priorities. Staff is recommending that they assume that this is an initiative, that they need to use a pilot approach as part of the other sources of revenue. So my recollection is that staff has recommended that. Uh, I'm I'm doing doing that. That's right. I think the distinction is council did not approve a policy, developing a policy. Staff has come back to say you've identified revenue opportunities as a priority. This is an additional opportunity that you might want to consider. In fact, it's the opportunity that brought this whole discussion to us in the first place. So it is very specific just to the conference center itself. I guess council had that option and chose not to. Okay, so it's here? Yes. Oh, uh, I'm I'm I was next to the speaker. Oh, I guess I'll just finish my comment that I, I don't support this at all. I think council had the opportunity to ask <coughs> the staff to pursue this. Council and the council chose to go for policy instead. And so when we looked at it in GPC, it was not pursued. So I don't know why we would do it now. To speak to the specific issue beyond the process. The conference center sort of has an ambass, sort of an embassy for the city. Like, is it going to be the Shaw Conference Center? And then what happens if they want to afford the TELUS conference or another telecom company? I just don't think it's appropriate for your conference center to be corporately branded. So, both for the content and the process reasons, I do not support this kind of priority for our council. Thank you. Councillor Alpo? Uh, in fact, uh, you checked the minutes when we had uh, the discussion last. That both GPC and Council the recommendation was to return it to the priority setting sessions for further discussion. Uh, and uh, what I understand looking at this is that, in fact, if you look back at our original priorities that we sent out, uh, creating new revenue came up as number seven, and yet all of the five specific components of how we might increase revenue did not make the top of the seven million, which seems a bit of a number to me. So, what I expect is that the staff have now. Uh, decided to propose this as a trial to determine whether or not opportunities like this could in fact move us towards our very well supported goal of increasing revenue. Six of us apparently prioritized that and came up with a score of 39. So it was very, very uh, high. Uh, and so I, I suggest that this is probably a proposed as a one-off to try and see whether or not it would actually work. Uh, so I'm happy to put it on the table. Thank you. Uh, it's on the table. Uh, I guess I have a small petrol awareness comment uh, in response to Councillor Eisen, uh, but I've got it from uh, Jocelyn Jenkins in the past, but uh, the issue of uh, conference centers is unusual for a naming corporate in the sense. Is it? Is it I'm asking, is it or is it? It, it is not unusual. And there's more than one tell us, which I go to a point of some confusion at some point. But um, no, it's not. I only know that at some point yeah. you gave me a document that basically is the highlight of every conference. There's several right. across Canada. So, and that document can be made available. Councillor uh, um, Matt. Thank you. Well, there certainly are several across Canada. And what's really wonderful is when you read the name of them, you don't know what city they're in. Because it's the Telus this or it's the Rogers that. And I think all you have to have done was to be around this past week to say the, the branding opportunity that no other city has that has an extraordinary value is the Victoria Conference Center. And any decision that I make, I always look for more than one principle in terms of my ability to uh, support it. And with this particular initiative, not to say that economic development is not important, but it's how we achieve that economic development. And in my opinion, this does not have any other principle attached to it other than a hope for several hundred thousand dollars, which may or may not count. So for that reason, I, I don't support it. Um, I think so many cities around the world would do anything to be able to have a name Victoria in front of the product that they're selling and all that it means. And I said, I'm sure all of us have spoken to scores of people over the last week, and everything they're talking about is Victoria and how important that is. To in terms of a corporate brand, we couldn't do any better. Yeah, I'm really struggling with this one. I want to increase revenue, obviously, I put my vote there. Um, but I worry about the absence, uh, proceeding with the absence of a policy. Um, and I know that we voted against that as a majority. So I'm, I'm torn. And I think, you know, 
I don't know if we're going to get big bucks for the conference center. What I think we'd get big bucks for is the Johnson Street Bridge. And if we're going to, I mean, uh, if we're going to explore, no, seriously, if we're going to explore the naming rights and everything, why not go for the big ticket item that we're asking our constituents to bear the borrowing cost of $49 million. So that would be my preference. So I think I, ha I have to vote against this. I think I'm curious to hear what others say, not on the basis that I don't support exploring revenue opportunities or naming rights, but I think we need a policy. And I think if we're going to choose one big ticket item, let's see if we can find a tasteful, appropriate sponsor to bear the very expensive borrowing costs. You know, $2 million a year for 15 years would go a long way. Those are my thoughts. Kevin Young, Jordan Joe, and Cole. Yeah, I'm going to have to vote against this too. Um, for the reasons that Summit, both Island Helps and Councillor Mao has mentioned, I, I agree with most of what has been said. The other thing is that I, this is a regional facility that I, I think we have to look at this fiscally responsibly with the Convention Centre. This is a, a facility that serves the entire region of Greater Victoria, and we're footing the bill, and I think just throwing more money at it to buy corporate gaming rights is just not the way to go to make it to make it fiscally responsible, we have to have tougher conversations with the region of how this facility should proceed in the future. Thank you. Uh, young for your call. Within, if not months, certainly years, people sitting at this council table are going to be wrestling with the question of whether we can afford to keep that thing open. open. We are dumping a ton of money into that. The decision will be, can we keep this facility open and the people sitting here will be looking at the revenues from that facility which will include the naming rights and the, the, the subsidy. I believe that if we can get some revenue for naming rights it will materially increase the probability that we will be able to continue to operate. Uh, Charlie Thornton Joe, it's cold. Yeah. I wasn't able to support it in the past and the reason was, was that I there was no policy that existed and I, I thought it was extremely important that whatever name it was, if, if, if a company's name is attached to it, it had to remain something Victoria Conference Center. Victoria had to remain as part of the name. And without a policy, I don't know if there's any way to ensure that. Uh, I, I, would be, I would consider it, this as Councilor uh, Young uh, has mentioned, but I can't say that I would support it when I came to the table without, um, without knowing that. And I think, you know, all of these of you have seen delegates. They've had to find where the Crystal Gardens is, which is part of the conference center, but doesn't have the name conference center. <coughs> attachment, people would say, you know, where is this being or Because they have to go to the Empress inside the Empress. So I think it, we do need to provide, as we already do, guidance to our conference guests of where they have to go. But the name, I think, is only important to me is as long as the city is listed as part of the name. Uh, so I can support it, but there would have to be some guidelines of uh, and not just a blanket. Come come up and give us a, a price and, and we'll consider it. Because without policy, then we're going to be sitting here and say, well, I like this company, or I don't do business with that company. And it can't be a political decision. It has to be something that has more of a policy that we can make that decision. Thank you. Um, Coleman, the report. Look, very nice and kind of, we chose not to move forward with policy. Therefore, you would go on. I, I am absolutely open to this discussion and having a corporate name put on. I think it does open our, um, us up to some creativity that <coughs> might be quite useful. And I think there's an opportunity. Uh, let's deal first with the, uh, the price point. We're talking probably in naming rights. They're usually 15-year contracts. We're probably talking in the order of the range of between two hundred fifty and five hundred thousand dollars a year. Depending how you parse that out, and I agree with uh, Councillor Thornton that I think keeping Victoria in is a very useful I also think there's some creativity in terms of partnering up with the Aboriginal uh, peoples because I think you can also incorporate the word Paishka as a welcome to the conference center. So it could be the pick the corporate name Paishka Center, in the, uh, conference center in Victoria. I don't care, but I think the opportunity to create some revenue stream that can be used specifically for the ongoing operation of the conference center, but also, and I think it's critically important, that if we had talked about the policy, you will remember one of the components was council keeps the veto power. So any application that comes forward, we have the right to say, oh, Enron, 
No, it's probably not. But anything else that's that's useful. So if you go to Calgary is the Shaw Center. Um, tell us, sorry. Um, Edmonton is the Epcor, I think. I mean, Shaw. Is it Shaw? But which goes to Councillor uh, Joe's component that you try and keep the name Victoria. So it brings the cost down somewhat, but I still think there's an enormous revenue stream that's available to us. So I'm quite open to this. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I think that it's something worth looking at. As you say, uh, what comes back, what price, uh, what's the name, all that sort of stuff is stuff that I think we look at. You know, so you have certain bars, but it's a, something to uh, at least as a pilot to take a look at. I think we can capture all the attention. I share Council Young's overall arching concern, uh, recognizing that our conference center uh, it will be a question of whether we can afford to keep it open and going. It's one of those terrible things where it generates anywhere from 40 to 60 million dollars of local economic uh, activity um, that we don't realize as, as directly as a level of government. Um, having said that, that's important to keep all, because everybody who comes here, it's all those shops downtown that they're buying. Uh, and currently 50% of all of our property taxes are paid by um, uh, commercial. Uh, and that's a lot of our downtown. So uh, I actually put that link together that, you know, secondhand, we get it through property taxes for people that commercial So uh, having that open is important, but I also have some big things on it. I, I, see a, I, I see another round of hands, but I'll be honest, I'm counting. I think it's 5 4 going ahead if I call the question now. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay, if you would like to have them, I'll call then Isaac and anybody else wants to speak to you. The only reason I wanted to, to reflect is that in fact, it is not the fact that we rejected the policy. When we had our last discussion, we actually decided to forward the policy discussion here to the state. So if in fact there's still an appetite to have a discussion about a greater policy, because I agree with the comments that say that it is not my first choice to do this as a one off, it is to do it in a thoughtful way situated in a thoughtful policy. But I would rather see us try this as a pilot and add into the discussion of the whole project on page 35 a note under years 2014 and 15 to say explore a general policy. So you know you support this as a one-off as a trial. A year in the next 36 months, you look at how that's worked and you develop the policy that gives people comfort who have anxiety around it being on yeah, I was going to move in another direction, which was to broaden this to explore alternative alternative sources of revenue to support the operations of the BCC, whether that's other municipal partners, whether that's reapportioning the $2.2 million annual hotel tax, which is a magnitude of almost 10 times as much as what we could possibly get from the rights. So there's bigger issues. To address the real issue, issues, how do we support the costs of our conference center and try to move away from the $90,000 annual subsidy? Lehman rates, I think, is a small part of this possible solution. And <coughs> I have a big question. I've had discussions with different marketing people and uh, conference center staff and who've indicated that the age of the tourism bureau in the, in the new media, things are changing. And we obviously, there'd be huge pushback from tourism Victoria, but I think. We could capture that revenue with hotel tax to bring the city to a revenue neutral position. So that's a bigger discussion. I think in terms of strategic priority for the city, moving we could even move the Victoria Conference Center to a revenue neutral position. And that means it's a whole discussion if it's naming rights, if it's Oak Bay and Sanitary Partnering, if it's a CRD service down the road. Like the Royal, who knows? So <coughs> that's the one I could go, but on this narrow one, I feel like it'd be fair to so that's uh, that's something I can support, but in terms of this narrow one, I don't think it looks at it big enough. And it won't actually address the revenue issue. It'll only take a dent out of that 900 grand annual subsidy. Thank you. Um, I could you call the question. All those in favor? Bring me 10 votes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Thank you. Those opposed? Um, Mara doesn't help. Isaac. Yes. Just a process. We're 
Councillor Alton said uh, something about 1450 explore general policy in relation to the next steps of this. Is that included? So for me, that's part of it as well, is to make sure that there's some lessons learned that we need to go down through uh, to help us for this week. My recommendation would be that maybe that when um, pilot is complete and you're considering you'll have some lessons and then you can kind of shape the motion as direction to staff at that time. If we can note it though in the detailed um, initiative, but you'll want to put some framework around that that you won't have until you look at the file. Okay, count uh, number 20, open government and open data. Uh, I think that's Councilor uh, Alto. That would be me. Just to make this efficient, uh, I'm not going to say all the things I said earlier at the wrong time, but what I'm going to suggest is uh, that the 20 actually have two, two bullet points there. So the, everything that's there is great because it all deals with 2013 and broadcasting. But what I'd like to suggest is uh, whether you want to put 20A or just as a second bullet that you include a line that says uh, implement further open government, open data measures as outlined in the September 24th memo that when you go across under start and end year, you put 2014-2015, and that under funding, you put funding must be reallocated within current financial plan. So it matches the rest of it. With that understanding, as an, amend as an, as an amendment, that, uh, basically that is the, now, <coughs> that is now the motion on the table. Mm -hmm. Councilor, separately. Pardon? Separately. There's going to be two items. Do I do the one that's there that this is a second item under the same topic? Oh, okay. I was assuming that the one about including webcasting was actually done in 2012. This is well, just no, it's 2013. It's 2013. It won't be implemented until 2013. Okay, so the first item is, is webcasting. Okay, yeah. remember webcasting. Let's move against all the favor. Opposed, carried. And now I move additionally by this. Uh, on the additional one set? Yeah, right. so, sure. it's so specific, like uh, what I had suggested earlier that the, Mr. Woodland's report gets referred to GPC, we hash it out. There's issues there around whether it's the most appropriate software, whether it needs two FTEs, a, a manager, an analyst. There's a lot of implications that I think can also change it to, oh, to uh, I guess, uh, implement. Why don't you just end it up for measures? So what would it be? Why don't you just say implement further open government open data measures, period. Perfect. Great. And then you have 2015, 2015. And, and I think Mr. Wendell's memo just gives us great guidance of what shape those measures can be. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. That's the motion on the table. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Janice, I can give you those. 22, examine the range of options, crystal pool. Who pulled that? I did. Okay. Um, now, Okay, this is actually Shane's apology. We were in sexual action with both items before it was consultation, so I guess first of all staff could address the change in how this is described in comparison to what we were banking. So I believe, I also believe it made the cut. It was ranked 22nd. It was explore public consultation options. Yeah, can staff will put this back on the table? Our poll is, is going to close itself shortly, either next week or in a year and a half, or we might get five or ten years out of it. So my concern but it's going to close, so council so needs to make the decision. Well, from what I read in the report, there's nothing that says it will close. That there's, I, I personally think maintain is completely feasible for that structure. So, uh, and, and it's an option. It's an option. It, but the, what I like is we're leading with the issue of public engagement. I think we have to lead with the technical and the engineering, the, the business. We need to allow this council, regardless of what previous councils did, to, to dig into it, to look at the reports, get a proper staff report on options, on the city's options. Once council has some idea, then we go to the public. But we don't jump into a communications piece. I think when, without having done the proper technical assessment, what's the state of the building and what upgrades are needed to keep us from the Perhaps staff could remind us, and it is unfortunate, Councillor, that you are new. I just read it last week, though. The report covered covers. So. So my understanding is the report that had to correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of the report was saying that we have some major issues mm -hmm. uh, that will uh, operational issues that uh, and we need to address them or face the risk of closure of the pool. Staff did a preliminary assessment at that time. And part of what we're saying is flesh those out and let's go out and talk to the community to see if the community 
may say, close the pool, we don't want to spend the money. We may say, spend $10 million to get 10 more years out of it. We may say, move forward on, on uh, a new one and, and move forward on you know, two or three different models. So I think that's what's being argumented, is that correct? Helps yeah, I, I voted to get this on the list. I ranked it as one of my key priorities, or at least top whatever we are supposed to, for the reason that it's about public engagement. We have all the, the reports been out, and you know, it's, I read it when it first came out. I think that we can familiarize ourselves with the issues, but I think it's a key public asset. We need to go to the public at this point with all the information that we have and say, these are the different realities. What do we do? It's time for public consultation. The public expects us to ask them in a formal way what to do, so I'm glad to see this back on, and I think it's our responsibility to, to ask at this point and take some guidance from our constituents. Thank you, Gretchen. I agree with uh, Councillor Phelps. My concern, my, I have a question for staff, is why do we need $150,000 for a consultant on this? Don't we have a communications department that can do this? <coughs> do they not have the capacity? In our staff, without having to hire a consultant. Why is there a $150,000 uh, cost associated with examining the options? Well, I, I talked to parts too, but, but part of it is to look at what the options, and, and to look at the options isn't a simple thing. Um, it, you know, it's really to, to look at what are the different options. You don't want to go out and consult until you have a good idea of what the options are to consult on. And secondly, when you do, and if you look at the OCP, and anything as big as this pool is going to require a fair amount of public consultation, which requires a fair amount of money in, in um, getting space, um, notices out, information, you know, it is, it's a big undertaking. And I don't know, Katie, you could maybe speak to it. I can't speak to the uh, budgetary number, but it doesn't include uh, consultants to be brought in to do the consultation. I, I, I would look to Julie actually in recreation, um, but there would be some hard costs obviously required in any consultation process, whether that be printing, advertising, or any public opportunities, um, and, and booking of space. But it, it's not to speak to labor costs or to have an outside consultant come in and do consultation on the city's behalf. And do so perhaps what we really need to do, we need an understanding of where we're coming from and an opportunity to refine it. Just to Okay, thank you. So what I did I just hear from you that staff will be doing it, but you need a budget to do it. That's different than hiring a consultant. Yeah. Yes. So that is sort of And I would refer back to Julie. Yeah, I think Julie should have to defer to Julie. And the only reason I would push that want to focus on this a little bit because I think our staff need, we have the staff capacity to do this without, so it was $150,000 for a consultant plus the probably $100,000 for printing and advertising and all that stuff and it's a much bigger Yes, it is. $150,000 Yes, it is. Thank you. It should probably say consultant support when you need a variety of different types of consultant support as you move forward. This will likely be a little bit of a we don't go out to the public once you come in to go out, we come back to some further assessment, which might mean we want some architectural drawings to go back at a subsequent time, probably brief counts and several times in between. Um, that whole process that has not been outlined, but we would need some support as we move along in the process. We also think another important element where we would want consultant support is, it, it, and it will depend on how the project charter eventually gets written, um, would be some type of survey work, maybe something through the social media to get the broad brush uh, input from the community <coughs> from those folks that don't actually attend um, sessions at a regular So could we change the 150000 for consultant to 150000 for engagement or consultation? I mean, I mean it is. Yeah, say for, say for so that would include project. all of the things. I, I, mind just, I don't like the sounds of just hiring a company to come in and saying consult. It's not the same as having the city staff actually engage with the public. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Helms, Councillor Bowen. I have a question of clarification. These numbers are all just numbers right now. We're not approving, when we approve these priorities, we're not approving any numbers. Is that correct? You're approving just the priorities. Just the priorities, and then the Part budgets budget. can come to us separately. So it says 150000 here. It could be 75000 It could be 25000 We could find a volunteer consultant. It could be 2000 We don't know. These are just our first estimates. 
Council Gadget. But just to set the, just to set it clear that it's staff driven. This will be a staff driven yes. consultation yes. process, not a consulting driven. Right. Right. That's all I want to be clear on, which I think is important to have. With you. Thank you for the clarification on on the so staff. You totally understand we're not approving the budget thing here. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Important, Council Coleman. Thank you, Rick. I think it would be useful as we take this out to consultation, and I do support this, that we also have a full understanding of the ratcheting up of the subsidy of the facility over years, because I think if we don't understand that bracket creep in terms of the level to which we've supported this, then it opens itself up to say, oh, I think we can carry on and, and maintain it as, oh, it may last another 10 or 20 years, and I, and I don't happen to believe that. I think we have a series of reports over the years that say, this is the danger point, this is where the facility is aging up, and this is the bracket creep we've seen in the cost of subsidy that we put to that facility. <coughs> that we let that out as we take it to the so they understand why uh, steady as you go response may not be appropriate. Thank you. Councillor Isaac, you wish to yeah, no, yeah. mention uh, to strike out the words and partnership possibilities from the initiative name. Sorry. Is that a range of options we need to to offer? I wouldn't support that either. I'm just, I'm moving it. I, okay, so I think uh, many municipalities in BC are able to support their own public swimming pool. I think it's an institution I grew up with as a child in Winnipeg and again in Victoria. And I think, um, I don't think we have to admit failure. I don't think the economic situation in Victoria and BC and the world has gone to the point where the capital city of BC can't go it alone on a public community swimming pool. And I think if we were to that bad, we may as well throw up our hands. So I'm confident this city can do it on its own if it has the political will. And I think what I read in that engineering report is that the building is structurally sound. I think the tank needs to be overhauled. I think we need an addition off the back that would be a family change room. And I think we can make do. And I'm sick of the idea of tearing down perfectly usable buildings for something new so big construction firms can have mega profits. And that's honestly my personal opinion. So um, that's why I, uh, I don't think we need to build something new with some private sector or third party operator. I think what we have is okay with some modest capital improvements. Thank you. Other question? Are we in favor? Is a amendment. Oh, you actually want to try to amend it? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 One is amendment to strike it out. So strike out the why. All those in favor? All those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Everybody else is opposed, Christine? Can someone propose the uh, original the motion? Original motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Council rises to vote. Thank you. Ask her. I propose too. Um, I don't think this is a priority for parks planning. I think when that bridge, if and when a new bridge is built, I think we'd be okay to put some salt on it in there. Um, I just I need to be convinced before we make it a priority for the city. Thank you. We, uh, like we, 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 what's the priority for parks plan? I think it's the Dallas Road Water Fund. I think it's other areas. But uh, Big West has had a huge influx of parks planning and parks expansion. I know you for sure. But honestly, there are huge public amenities in Big West. And I personally think there are other priorities in the city for our parks planning project. OK. Uh, that is your opinion. Yeah. Um, did someone do did someone this, by the way? Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Councilor Isaac and Young is Yeah, I'm opposed to, I don't have enough information that's just left onto the list. So. Okay, three people opposed? Young, Isaac, and Young. Okay. Is there any more after 23? No. What's that? That's it. So just before you adjourn, if I could say, we started on this journey a number of months ago, and I, I just really want to congratulate first the council because I think you really have made your voice heard. It's been a challenging process, but you know, it is really, for me, it's satisfying <coughs> at the end of the day that you spoke and, and wrestled and, and you have actually come up with um, a, a whole list of you know, longer term priorities and I, I think you're to be congratulated for that. And I, and I think your staff have done a masterful job too, it's particularly in this last phase, uh, preparing the, the details. So I, I, I think that they should really be congratulated and I want to thank you for having a, a chance to be a part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I would like to thank as well, personally thank all the staff for the work that's gone in to support council and making these priorities. Thank you, staff. Well done. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.